This week we got something we're not used to as a Song of Ice and Fire fans. Something new. Albeit that something new is something old, but it is still quite interesting. We got a new set of covers for the first five books in a Song of Ice and Fire. They are set to be re-released as a box set, and then it sounds like later individually, in addition to having a brand new symbol for the series, which is all of the letters abbreviating the title. A Song of Ice and Fire, A S. O-I-A-F. I always do that abbreviation in the wrong order. Today, I'm going to examine what exactly this box set might mean for the future of the series, as well as speculate on what exactly is going on in each of these covers, as well as what might exactly be on the cover of The Winds of Winter. So let us dive into speculating and discussing. To start off, I should clear up some misinterpretation I've been seeing of this box set. A lot of people are interpreting this as a special edition, as something that's just going to be like a limited release, cash grab type deal, but the blog post that announces them really does not indicate this. In fact, it indicates the exact opposite. To quote from that blog post, which showed off all of the new covers and was essentially brought to us by the people working for Martin, quote, the stunning new covers for the first five books. This sounds like not only is this a box set that is showing off just new covers for the series, these are the new covers for the series. This is a new edition, which has really not happened since, I believe, 2011. It's going to be just kind of a change because any time that there is a larger change in a series, you want to match that with the covers. Specifically, as the great and powerful Preston Jacobs said when we were speculating on a different Wins cover that was supposedly revealed about a year ago that did not end up being the real thing, uh, when a new book is released, you're going to want to have new covers for the old version, so people have to buy all new versions of all of the books just to get more money out of it, which, I mean, makes sense from a publishing perspective and could indicate something interesting about the future of the series. That brings me to my next point. I brought this up briefly in my video a couple days ago, but in 2011, the newest book in the series was A Feast for Crows. There were only four books out. There was a box set of the four uh, current books at that point in new paperback covers released in March of 2011. A Dance with Dragons was announced in March of 2011 and was revealed to have a cover that matched all of these new editions. So it does make sense that maybe if they are changing up the series, if they're giving it a brand new look, seemingly out of nowhere, that could indicate at least some publication coming in the near future. I know people tend to speculate, oh, anything new, probably he's just working on Blood and Fire or something, but we don't see an update to Fire and Blood in this style. We just see updates to the main series. I do also quite like the art. It's a lot more kind of... Uh, I don't know, dynamic than the kind of stoic covers that we previously had. And I'm personally a fan. I do think it could be quite interesting to examine them uh, to see what's going on in each and figure out what could be on Wynn's cover should it come out. I do want to hear, what's your opinion on these new covers? What do you think? Do you think they're a positive indication for the Winds of Winter? Do you think the book's never coming? I'd be very excited to hear your thoughts. While you're down there, leave a like, subscribe, all the typical YouTube stuff. It really helps grow the channel, and it just makes me feel good. Back to the cover speculation. A lot of people have been asking, oh, what's going on in these covers? Who is on each of these covers? So I'm going to go through them one by one now and discuss my thoughts and one theory I have regarding these covers. The first one, A Game of Thrones, is pretty self-explanatory. The mountain made to look like the wolf is obviously resembling the ghost, Jon Snow's direwolf, and the individual trekking up the mountain is likely Jon Snow. Though it is worth noting that Jon really doesn't go north of the wall very much in the first book. I believe he goes north to swear his vows in front of a weirwood. But other than that, the great ranging doesn't start until, I think, a chapter into A Clash of Kings. So this art might indicate something else. My thought when I first saw it, outside of the wolf, was that maybe it's indicating the prologue. Maybe this is uh, the one ranger that survives wandering home to eventually be executed by Ned Stark. I think that could be interesting, just kind of signaling the first chapter of the entire series and the cover. But either way, I, I'm very much a fan of it. This is, I think, my second favorite of the covers so far. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm a fan. A Clash of Kings is a little trickier. There's obviously the lion's mouth being a very kind of focal point on the entirety of the cover, but the individual in the lion's mouth is strange. I don't know what exactly this could be symbolizing. In the show, there was this big lion that the dwarves came out of at Joffrey's wedding, so that was my first thought, but I don't think it's that. My gut is saying that maybe this is somebody like charging the gates at the Blattle of the Blackwater, Blattle of the Blackwater, um, and essentially that the gate would be the lion's mouth in this point because they are running into the maw of the lion. Very much makes sense with them winning. 
the torch does seem to be the main kind of point of prominence here as it is the center and is casting this light in the center. I can't think of that many torches that are that essential. Oh, that could also be like Braun maybe lighting his arrow for the Blackwater, seeing as that is the main kind of thrust of that battle, and that is a battle perpetrated by the Lions, by the Lannisters. That could make sense, though I do have a theory about this cover that I'll get into when I discuss the next cover. A Storm of Swords is, I think, my favorite cover this series has ever had. The colors just rule, and it's just a really cool set piece as well. We see a figure with a sword who is standing in front of King's Landing. It's unclear who exactly that is. He is standing on the back of a stag, and we can see in the background the Red Comet there. This is quite interesting. The Red Comet is not a thing that happens in A Storm of Swords. It's a thing from A Clash of Kings. This leads me to kind of speculate that maybe the titles, or not the titles, sorry, the covers for A Clash of Kings and A Storm of Swords might have been flipped at some point in the, uh, before the publication of these books. This is very much the better cover, and I also think that, at least in the eyes of the community, Storm is the better book. So I think they might have wanted to give that more of a dynamic cover, more of an eye-catching cover. But it is quite interesting, because my initial thought on looking at these covers was that the figure with the torch in the Clash of Kings cover, looks a lot like Oberyn with the torch in the show when he's proclaiming that he will be Tyrion's champion. That was my first thought, and he would be going into the jaws of the lion as he is fighting against the lion's champion, Gregor Clegane, in Tyrion's trial by combat. Overall, I think it is uh, kind of interesting to note, but I don't think it's that much of a conspiracy theory or big deal. I think both covers are excellent, and Storm is by far my favorite in the series. I should also say who I think that figure on Storm's cover is. I think it could be, uh, if it is supposed to be for Storm of Swords, it could be Oberyn, the Red Viper, arriving at King's Landing. But if it is originally intended for Clash of Kings, that would very much make sense to be Stannis, who is marching on King's Landing on the back of a stag, both being his own sigil and the men he claimed from his brother after killing him with the Shadow Baby. A Feast for Crows is sort of the most abstract of the covers. You really can't tell what's going on outside of the massive crow on the cover. There is a woman with a sword, and I've seen a lot of speculation on who that is. My gut instinct was Brienne the Beauty. I don't know how long her hair is in the books, but I could very much see that being kind of a representation of her, or even if her hair isn't that long, being kind of a metaphor for her beauty. I've heard people suggest Arya being standing there with Needle. I could see that, but also she gives up Needle in this book. It's kind of one of the main driving parts of her story. And also, I'm not sure, that sword looks a little beefy to be Needle. The other one I've seen suggested is Asha at the King's Moot. I could see the clouds behind the crow kind of being maybe ocean or just looking off a cliff into the sea or something similar. But overall, Asha tends to use axes, not swords. It is worth noting that all four, uh, or sorry, all five of these covers do have an individual holding a sword on them. So it does kind of have to have this repeating pattern, but it is interesting to speculate who this is. I think it's Brienne. That's my instinct, but it's hard to say. Could be Asha, could be Arya. It took an inordinate amount of time for me to realize that the cover of A Dance with Dragons is the Eye of a Dragon. I think it took me three full days to realize that. With that said, this is a very interesting scene, and I'm really not sure what it's showing. We see a grove of trees and an individual, my interpretation is walking away from the dragon, which is fascinating. The main thing that it makes me think of is Daenerys and the Dothraki Sea at the very end of the book when she and Drogon are together and separated and together and she's kind of fighting against her true nature and also having some explosive diarrhea, which I don't need to get into. But I do think that having the sword there is a bit of a, a problem for that interpretation. Daenerys has a whip at that point to control Drogon, but does not have a sword as far as I'm aware. I've seen people speculate that it's Jon. I've seen people speculate that all of these covers have Jon on them, but I don't particularly buy that interpretation. I think that this is somebody, but it's unclear who. That grove of trees is really what's giving me trouble here. I could see it being a number of people. It seems like a woman's form, too, based on just looking at it, but that could just be a trick of the light. This is the one that's been the hardest for me to interpret so far. What might be on the cover of The Winds of Winter, though? It's worth looking at the patterns in all of these covers before to see what might happen in the future. As I noted, all of these covers have an individual with a sword. Most of them are holding the sword. Two of them have the sword over their back. So it is pretty much certain that we will see an individual with a sword on the cover of The Winds of Winter. However, it is also worth noting that each of them has a fairly prominent animal that we can't quite see all of. We see a wolf, a lion, a stag, a crow, and a dragon. 
four of those five are heraldry in Westeros. One of those five is the title of the book. Uh, so they'd kind of have to go with a crow. So overall, I think that it is interesting to speculate what animals might be on the cover of The Winds of Winter should it be released, as it is going to likely be in this style when it is released. I do think Winds will be released at some point, and I do think it'll be in this style, as these are the new covers for the series, according to this blog post. I have two predictions for the cover of The Winds of Winter's Animal. I think that first off, a white raven is the most likely. In Westeros, the white raven heralds in the changing of the seasons. We see it in the epilogue of A Dance with Dragons, where Kevin receives a white raven to herald the coming of winter. And I think that just being the winds of winter, it would very much make sense to be a raven. That said, a raven and a crow look quite similar, and I could see that being a reason to not have them be the same. Uh, but overall, the winds of winter being represented by the literal wings of winter seems like too good of an opportunity to pass up to me. The other option, if you wanted to go with heraldry, was my thought for a kraken. This is the first book where we'll have all four Greyjoys as viewpoint characters that are viewpoint characters, those being Aeron, uh, Theon, Asha, and Victarion, and they will likely have a big role to play, but overall that doesn't really make a lot of sense with the title being The Winds of Winter, as I think that it being a white raven would very much just kind of embody the book to a greater degree, though seeing as a crow is used for Feast for Crows, I don't know how likely that is. We'll see. I also have no idea who the person with the sword on the cover of The Winds of Winter is going to be. My instinct is maybe Stannis with Lightbringer would be really cool, but overall I could see a number of people. Aegon with Blackfire would also be pretty neat, but overall there are a billion candidates and people with swords in the series. It's going to be strong Bellwas! Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and comment. That all helps the video, helps the channel, and it just generally makes me feel good. And let me know what you think of these covers and of potential covers for the Winds of Winter. I'd love to hear your opinions. Uh, I do apologize for the audio quality of this video. I'm traveling, so it's not as good as normal. It should be back to normal as of next video, but I did just want to make this because I had a lot of thoughts, and I wanted to share them with you specifically because I care so much about you. Thank you again so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for more House of the Dragon or... Uh, Game of Thrones, or A Song of Ice and Fire. Goodbye!